Are you tired of getting old waiting to demold your cement all jars? Are you angry that Hydrostone is harder to get than a parking spot on Black Friday? Are you stuck in a horrible sitcom episode of Indecision Galore choosing between Cementol and Hydrostone? Well, wipe away those tears of frustration because I've got the solution for you. Cementrostone. Hi, my name is Jay Catalano. Meet Cementol, Harry, and Hydrostone Sally. Each product I use making these two candle jars is amazing by itself, but like everything in this world, it ain't perfect. Well, some things are. Here's the problem. To only talk about the pros and cons of Cementol and Hydrostone isn't fair to you, and honestly, it doesn't do each product any justice. The solution? We need to fully create test and observe them as well. So let's go through how I made Cement All Harry and Hydrostone Sally and maybe, just maybe, at the end, I'll show you what Cementrostone looks like, or better said, what happened when Harry met Sally. What is Cementol? Cementol, a product manufactured by Rapid Cement, is a cement-based material known for its fast-setting properties and durability. It is used in a wide range of uses and has become an essential component in the world of concrete candle jars. Cementol is composed of two primary ingredients, CSA cement and silica sand. Interestingly, unlike traditional cement mixtures, it does not require an additional aggregate. Instead, the activation process of cementol begins simply by adding water. What is hydrostone? Hydrostone, produced by USG Corporation, is a brand of gypsum cement designed with high strength and low expansion properties upon setting. It finds applications in various artistic fields like sculpture, pottery, and even the growing trend of concrete candle jars. Activation of hydrostone simply requires that you add it to water. Here's a quick breakdown of what we will discuss. What? I said it was gonna be quick. Okay, let me slow it down for you. I'm going to discuss accessibility, ease of use, pigment application, dry times, cure times, safety, strength, problems you might be faced with, the overall weight, ceiling, and last but far from least, the cost. So let's make this into a little game. We'll go through each category if either Cementol or Hydrostone is more desirable or better suited than the other in that category, that candle jar will get a point. In the end, we will add them up and see who wins. Then we'll test out Harry and Sally, and then I'll give you my overall thoughts and tell you which I prefer. Let's go. Number one, accessibility. In order for me to buy cement all, I only have to travel to my local Home Depot store, which is only 9.3 miles from my home, or a total of 18.6 miles round trip. In order to buy Hydrostone, I have to have it shipped from Canada, which is an added expense. Why Canada and not the United States? Because that's where I live. With all the research I have done, I have found that it is actually cheaper for me to have it shipped from my neighboring country. I don't know why. Fortunately, I recently discovered that there is a place that sells Hydrostone 40 miles or 80 miles round trip from my home, which means I can now drive there to get it. But with that said, Cementol is much more accessible for me and conveniently picks up the win. Number two, ease of use. Both Cementol and Hydrostone are easy to use. Let's break it down. To create Cementol Harry, I simply combine 380 grams of Cementol with 95 grams of water, which is a four to one ratio. After thoroughly stirring them together, I poured the mixture into a silicone mold and removed any bubbles by vibrating it with my vibrating machine. And once it dried, I happily demolded Cementol Harry. Hydrostone Sally's process, on the other hand, is a bit different. To create Hydrostone Sally, I simply added 380 grams of Hydrostone to 125 grams of water, which is a 3 to 1 ratio. After waiting for a dry bed lake effect to take a place, I thoroughly stirred them together, poured the mixture into a silicone mold, and removed any bubbles by vibrating it with a vibrating machine. As you can clearly see, the process differs between Cementol and Hydrostone in terms of adding water. 
In cementol, water is added to the mixture, while in hydrostone, it is hydrostone that gets added to the water. I know what you're thinking. Who cares what gets added first? Don't be so stupid, Jay. It all works out to be the same in the end. Ah, great point, but not so fast, Sherlock Holmes. There is a big distinction between the two, and the difference maker is this. When water comes into contact with cementol, it starts the activation process, which means you have about a five minute window before it starts to set. Therefore, it's important to keep the process going within that time frame. Whereas with hydrostone, you have up to 15 minutes of waiting time once the hydrostone touches the water. In fact, it is recommended to let the hydrostone create a dry lake bed effect by absorbing the water first before mixing. And what does that mean? Well, raise your hand if this has ever happened to you before. How many times have you started to add your ingredients together and forgot something like your mixing utensil? How many times have you started to add your ingredients together and just as you begin, the doorbell rings? Or how many times have you started to add your ingredients together and suddenly realized you urgently needed to use the bathroom? Can I use the bathroom? Okay, maybe that last one was a stretch, but you get my point. In my opinion, hydrostone has a favorable characteristic that contributes to its ease of use making it the easy winner. And speaking of winner, if you're new to the world of creating concrete candle jars, you feel lost and just want to improve your skills, I've got something awesome for you. It's called the Winning Formula, a comprehensive course that covers everything you need to know from the basics of working with concrete to mastering your formula through the skillful use of color pigments. This course has got you covered. It's not just about teaching you how to do something, but ensuring you understand it fully so you can confidently take action. The best part, you'll have direct access to me, which means you'll save valuable time, money, and avoid a boatload of headaches. I'm here to support you every step of the way. And in addition to all of that, inside this course, you'll discover an amazing collection of bonus resources that you won't want to miss. None of this stuff is public on my YouTube channel. These extras will take your learning experience to a whole new level and help you become a pro at making concrete candle jars. Check out the link in the description for more details and start elevating your concrete candle jar making skills today. Let's go. Number three, pigment application. Both hydrostone and cementol showcase excellent pigment absorption capabilities resulting in impressive finished products. Here's a few examples showcasing what I mean. In a nutshell, the process is simple. Add pigment to the dry mixture, combine it with water, and voila. As you've seen, the outcomes appear quite similar. Nevertheless, when it comes to creating a white candle jar using titanium dioxide with cementol is necessary, yet, even with the addition of titanium dioxide, the final product falls short of pure white, leaning more towards light gray than white. On the other hand, hydrostone is naturally white without the addition of titanium dioxide, making it particularly desirable in this context. Now I know what you're thinking, wait a minute, White isn't a color and we're discussing pigment application. That's not fair, Jay. You're absolutely right, my fine featherless friend. White is devoid of color. However, within the candle making community, white candle jars are immensely popular. And those who utilize cementol and titanium dioxide are not entirely satisfied with their outcomes. Okay, but fair is fair. So let's forget the white scenario for a minute and move on to other colors. Although most of the pigments I've used give similar results with both cemento and hydrostone, there are certain colors that cannot be achieved with certain pigments as effectively using cementol compared to hydrostone. For example, by adding this secret red pigment, the results of using it in a cementol concrete candle jar differ greatly from when it's mixed with hydrostone. To be completely honest, the visual appeal in a cementol concrete candle jar falls a bit short when compared to the outcome achieved with hydrostone. In fact, the difference is bananas, or shall I say cherries? And bright red it is not the only color that this applies to, so in the grand scheme of things, hydrostone demonstrates better capability with pigments compared to cementol 
making it the colorful winner. Number four, demolding times. If you have worked with both Hydrostone and Cementol in the past, this is a no brainer. Let's have a look at both Cementol Harry and Hydrostone Sally. I was able to demold Cementol Harry in approximately three hours. Hydrostone Sally, on the other hand, took approximately 30 minutes to demold. That is a huge difference. And for that reason, Hydrostone is the quick winner. Number five, curing time. Several factors contribute to the curing times of a crafted item, making it a unique and fascinating process. The size of the item, the humidity in the air, and the overall temperature play crucial roles in determining the curing time. Additionally, the moisture content in your mixture, the presence of additives, and even the specific chemicals in your water can also influence the curing process. All of these different factors affect the curing time. With that said, in general, concrete takes up to 28 days to cure and hydrostone takes about a week. However, candle jars aren't too thick, and so it doesn't take that long to cure in relation to their general curing times. The question is though, how long did it take for Cement All Harry and Hydrostone Sally to cure? To arrive at that answer, I weighed them daily after I demolded them to see when they would stop losing their moisture weight. Cement All Harry took three days to cure while Hydrostone Sally took two. What's the difference between three days and two days? Oh, I know, um, a Lunar Express? <laughs> Is the answer one day? Yes, one day. And for that reason, Hydrostone is beyond a doubt the solid winner. Number six, weight. After being demolded, Cement All Harry weighed a total of 414 grams. Once it cured, it dropped 23 grams and ended up weighing 391 grams. On the other hand, Hydrostone Sally initially weighed 385 grams. But after dropping 36 grams, it reached the final weight of 349 grams. Sometimes having a heavier item can be advantageous depending on what it is. For example, an anchor, a security door, or a bowling ball could undoubtedly benefit from being heavier. However, when it comes to a candle jar, being heavier doesn't have many advantages. And for that reason, Hydrostone is the thinner winner. Number seven, safety. There are two factors we should consider when we are talking about safety, environmental safety and personal safety. Let's start with environmental safety. Some of you might have heard that concrete has a big impact on the environment. When it's made, it releases a lot of carbon dioxide, which is bad for the environment. Even when we use it and get rid of it later, it still adds to its impact. However, I would imagine that those circumstances are more concerning for larger projects such as building constructions, dams, bridges and tunnels and retaining walls, and not so much for concrete candle jar makers. But we are contributing to the environmental impact no matter how small, and so it's worth noting. In regards to hydrostone, the environmental impact is relatively low. It requires mining from gypsum, but is considered less harmful than other materials. The production process emits low carbon emissions and is considered relatively eco-friendly, but responsible usage and disposal are still a necessity. Now, the other safety factor is personal safety and probably the one we should be looking at more because like I alluded to earlier, we are just a drop in the proverbial concrete candle jar making ocean in regards to environmental concerns. And without a doubt, you should not be sniffing, inhaling, or ingesting either of these products. Duh. However, one of them has silica sand in it. What is silica sand? Silica sand is a type of sand composed of silicon dioxide and one of the ingredients in cementol. Prolonged exposure to airborne silica dust generated during certain activities like making concrete candle jars can pose health risks. Inhaling fine particles of silica can lead to lung diseases like silicosis, which can cause respiratory conditions like COPD and lung cancer. And if you don't own a respirator, here's what you do right now. Take your thumb, place it in your mouth, blow several times, release your thumb from your mouth, and 
slap yourself. In regards to hydrostone, silica sand is not a part of its mixture. However, you should still wear a respirator no matter what. With that said, hydrostone isn't as dangerous or environmentally impactful as cementol, and for that reason, hydrostone is the safer winner. Number eight, sealing. Both cementol and hydrostone need to be sealed because they are very porous in nature, and anyone that knows this channel knows that I have tested many, 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 many sealants. And with that said, my experience with sealing hydrostone is not as extensive as it is with cementol. However, through my experience, I have found that it takes a little bit more sealing effort to seal a hydrostone jar. For example, when I sealed Cement All Harry, I used Earth Safe Finishes Quick Dip Sealer, link is in the description, and only had to seal it one time. For Hydrostone Sally, I had to spend a little more time dipping it in a total of three times. The reason is most likely due to its porosity because Hydrostone is more porous than Cementol. And for what it's worth, due to the differences between Cementol and Hydrostone, sealers act differently with each product. For example, I have used Homax, EarthSafe Finishes, and Echo Advance to seal both Hydrostone and Cementol jars, and each time I sealed them, the Hydrostone jars needed to be sealed more times than the Cementol jars. However, and unfortunately, when I sealed the Hydrostone candle jar with Homax, filled it with candle wax, lit it up, and burned it all the way down, the sealer ultimately failed and the wax seeped through. And for that reason, Cementol sealed the win. Number nine, potential problems. There are a few potential problems we might face while using both Cementol and Hydrostone. Two of the biggest problems are cracking and bubbles. Let's start with the bubbles. Both Hydrostone and Cementol items need to be vibrated or tapped to get the bubbles out. However, Hydrostone tends to be less prone to a lot of bubbles. Now don't get me wrong, Hydrostone Sally has some bubbles, but Cementol Harry has some more. Moving on to cracking, it's important to understand that under extreme conditions, both items will crack. However, concrete undergoes a natural drying process as it cures, which leads to shrinkage. This shrinkage can result in cracks. In addition, some people like to water bathe their cement all jars because water slows down the drying process in concrete, which will help to control cracking. On the other hand, hydrostone does not undergo the same drying process and does not require water bathing at all. Now, there is a third problem that Cementol does not have an issue with, hydrostone does, and that is calcination. What is calcination? Calcination refers to the process of heating a material to a high temperature to cause chemical or physical changes. Anything over 125 degrees and calcination can start to occur. Now, if you subscribe to the theory that all candle jars should never exceed 140 degrees in temperature, then you only have 15 degrees to think about. You know, 140 degrees minus 125 degrees equals 15 degrees. If you don't think that 140 degrees is accurate, it is, and you believe a candle jar's surface temperature can be higher, it can't, then you have more to worry about if you use hydrostone. But what about those 15 degrees, assuming 140 degrees is our max surface temperature? Is that a big problem? The answer is yes and no. The yes part is obvious. Calcination begins at 125 degrees. Anything over that is a potential risk. The no part is that a good sealant should protect it enough from ever having to go through the calcination process. That doesn't mean it can't occur anyway. I know what you're thinking. I thought a sealant was supposed to protect the jar, Jay. What the fibberty gibbet? Think of a sealant like a contraceptive device. Don't worry, parents. You won't need to send your children out of the room for this explanation. Some contraceptives are going to work better than others, and the success rate of those devices depend on how well they work. However, it's not 100% safe. And the reason I know this is because I have two kids. <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> No, I'm not. So with that said, both Hydrostone and Cementol have potential issues, and that is something to think about. All of these issues are solvable, but never with 100% certainty. And for that reason, there is a problem assigning a winner. So for this category, for me, it's a tie. Number 10, 
strength. Both hydrostone and cement doll items are very strong once they are demolded and even stronger once they are cured. Cement doll goes from 3,000 PSI to 9,000 PSI, whereas hydrostone goes from 4,000 PSI to 10,000 PSI. Now, it's pretty obvious that there is a stronger winner in hydrostone, but have you ever heard of a hydrostone roadway or bridge? The answer is no, or as they say in Spanish, no. Why? Hydrostone plaster is unsuitable for roadways and bridges because it lacks the necessary strength, durability, wear resistance, skin resistance, and compatibility with construction techniques required for such infrastructure. And remember calcination? Hydrostone is strong, but only under perfect circumstances. And for that reason, even though a jar is totally different than a roadway, Cementol is the stronger winner. Number 11, cost. Let's face it, one of the most important factors in our world today is cost. And with the rising prices, we all wanna save money. How much does a cement doll bag cost versus a hydrostone bag? A 55 pound bag of cement doll costs $31.19, which includes tax and my driving expense. A 50 pound bag of hydrostone, which is five pounds lighter, costs me $71.31, which includes shipping. This is a difference of $40.12, and if you add in the five pound cost difference, there is a $2.80 differential. That means that Hydrostone is $42.92 more expensive, or better said, a little more than 60% higher in cost than Cementol. It's pretty obvious that the Cementol is the economical winner, but, and this is a big but, those numbers don't tell the real financial story, and I'll explain in just a minute, but for now, let's say that Cementol gets the win. Finally, all the categories are complete, so let's do a recap and tally up the score. Cementol Harry was a winner in four categories, accessibility, ceiling, strength, and cost, whereas Hydrostone Sally was a winner in six categories, ease of use, pigment application, demolding times, curing times, weight, and safety. In regard to the potential problems category, they are tied, and so there will be no need to add or subtract a point. The total thus far is Cement Doll Harry 4 and Hydrostone Sally 6. However, what good is talking about them if we don't put them to the test? So let's do a burn test and see how they perform so we can make some final notes and I can give you my overall thoughts on both Cement Doll and Hydrostone. Let's go. <laughs> Results. Both Cement Doll and Hydrostone held up really well when I did a power burn test. And in case you were wondering, I used Earth Safe Finishes sealant to seal them both. The surface temperature reached 143 degrees at its peak for both jars, and there doesn't seem to be any failure on either jar, especially the Hydrostone jar, which, if you remember, is subject to calcination over 125 degrees. In my opinion, they were both a success. Now, if you remember, Hydrostone Sally was leading Cement All Harry by two points. However, let's be real. There are two categories out of the 11 that are significantly more important to you and me, assuming that there's a successful power burn on both jars. Those two categories are safety and cost. And don't get me wrong, the other categories are important, but dying or dead broke, those categories hold more weight. And depending on which is more important to you, the win in this category might be the deciding factor as to what is better or more desirable to use for you. If you value safety over cost, undoubtedly Hydrostone is the winner. If you value cost over safety, then Cementol is the clear winner. 
However, as I said before, the financial numbers don't tell the real story, even though earlier we learned that there was a 60% financial increase in using Hydrostone over Cementol. 60%! That's a huge difference. Or maybe it isn't. Let me explain. If you remember, it took me 30 minutes to demold Hydrostone Sally versus the three hours it took to demold Cementol Harry. That is a very fast and significant amount of time to save if I wanted to make hundreds of vessels just like Hydrostone Sally. To put that in financial perspective, if I wanted to make six Cementol vessels in three hours, I would need to buy six Amazon silicone molds for a total of $74.97. Or if I wanted to make six Hydrostone vessels in three hours, I would only need to buy one Amazon silicone mold for a total of $14.99. That is a difference of $59.98. Or better said, you can save 80% of your silicone mold budget using Hydrostone. So the question now becomes, is Cementol actually cheaper than Hydrostone? The long-term answer, as you continue to grow and expand, might actually be no. So there is a lot for you to think about when making a financial business decision on which product to use, Cementol or Hydrostone. Now, which is my favorite? After thoroughly calculating all the categories and determining that cost and safety are my top two concerns, Hydrostone Sally is my winner. I can just see all the Cementol lovers out there right now. Environment and personal safety is very important to me and cost is a huge concern. But I actually feel that Hydrostone works out to be less expensive for me in the long run. In addition, my overall cost should come down considerably now that I'm able to find Hydrostone closer to home. Don't worry though, I'm still going to be using Cementol and in my opinion, they both serve a purpose and they are both worth our consideration as artists. So, I will be using both, especially for this channel. Now, if you stuck around to see my half Cementol, half Hydrostone, aka Cementostone candle jar, here's what it looks like. It actually looks like the Cementol vessel, but it's not all Cementol. It's 50% Cementol and 50% Hydrostone, or better said, Cementostone. Cementostone is actually a pretty cool name, right? Wait a minute. Hmm. Maybe I'm on to something. <laughs> and take a look at these videos that are popping up now. They're going to help you on your concrete, hydrostone, and candle making journey. Until next time, thanks for watching. Ciao.